Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Krieger. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Uh, so uh, yesterday, uh, I, we talked about the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee uh, looked down on others. He uh, compared external works that he did to the external works of of someone else, uh, and he judged his own to be better, more righteous, more virtuous, and he held that up uh, to God as proof that he actually was righteous. And that's where he placed all of his trust. He said, I know I'm good enough for you because I'm better than him. And God says, that's not righteousness. <laughs> it's not righteous to look at yourself and deem yourself righteous. Uh, the tax collector compared himself to no one. He compared himself only uh, to God, uh, maybe. Um, and he said, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Uh, you could actually uh, translate it as, God have mercy on me, the sinner, as in the worst sinner. And so in the section immediately following this in Luke 18, Jesus goes uh, even further uh, than this. In case we would, we would walk away from this thinking, all right, so the way to please God is to have a good attitude about it, to, to think rightly. Um, and maybe that's what God considers righteousness, to think of myself as terrible. Uh, but really, that would just make us just like the Pharisee, to hold up my attitude and say, that's what makes me righteous. Um, we could even in that case borrow much of the Pharisee's prayer God, I thank you that I'm not like other men who are self-righteous, who are proud, who compare themselves to others. I don't do that. Uh, just look at that Pharisee. He does that, not me. Well, then we're falling into the exact same trap, right? So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 18, and Jesus makes it crystal clear that that's really the same problem. Um, people were also bringing babies to Jesus to have him touch them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of our Lord. Sometimes uh, we'll read this section, and and maybe you've heard it, heard the application uh, that we should have a childlike trust. And that's, that's there. That's part of this. But I want you to think about this. What is the defining characteristic of an infant? I would say more than anything else, it's dependence. It's helplessness. They can't do anything for themselves. And as parents, we don't, we don't want uh, to, to wait for them to ask before we give them something to eat. We know they need it, so we give it to them. Uh, they don't wait until they ask to be changed. We know that they need that, and so we give it to them. They don't. We don't wait until they ask to take a nap. We know that's something they need, and so we, we put them in their beds. We rock them to sleep. We do these things for them because we know better than them, and because on their own, they are completely helpless. They can't do a thing for themselves. So how is it that we characterize our relationship with God? Well, it's the exact same thing, just like Jesus says. Jesus is telling us to enter the kingdom in a, a state of complete helplessness and utter dependence. There is nothing I can do to bring myself into God's kingdom, so God, you have to do it for me. So that's what the tax collector meant by, have mercy on me. He's saying, I can't save myself. God, I need you to do it. And God does. Uh, Jesus says that this man went home justified because Jesus did it all for him. He faced temptation and he never sinned. He fulfilled God's law every moment of his life without fail. And then he took God's wrath on himself, the punishment for our sin. He died on the cross and he completed everything for us because we were helpless. Now there's a... there's a, Something that we can apply this to and connect it to, and it's something that a lot of Christians are divided on, is whether or not 
children should be baptized. And the people who say that they ought not be baptized until they're old enough, they'll say things like, well, the Bible never specifically says to baptize babies. And they'll say there are no explicit examples in the Bible of an infant being baptized. And they'll say, well, you really need to have faith first before you can be baptized. And children can't have faith because they don't have the intellectual capabilities to decide whether or not they believe, uh, believe in something or not. And some will even add... Um, Babies don't need baptism because they're not sinful. They come into the world as a blank slate and sin has to be learned. Wickedness has to be learned. Now, I recognize that I'm, I'm not representing every objection here. And I hope, hope I haven't reduced any of them um, to, to a more simple version of it that, that doesn't characterize what they actually uh, these, these uh, Christians would actually uh, say themselves. Um, my, my objective isn't to do any of that, but I am going to make a really broad statement about every objection that I've mentioned and every one that I haven't mentioned here. And you can feel free to challenge me on this, but I'm going to say not one of them is based on the Bible. There is no passage that says don't baptize infants. There's no Bible passage that says baptism should only be a response to faith. But there are Bible passages that tell us to baptize every nation, all nations. There are passages that tell us that baptism saves us. There are Bible passages that tell us that we're sinful from birth. And there's this one that we just read. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. And that's the whole point of this whole section. It's utter dependence. It's, it's as true of, of an adult as it is for a child, as it is for a newborn baby. We depend entirely on the Holy Spirit for faith. And it's only by the Holy Spirit that anyone can believe in Jesus. So it's a miracle when an adult believes in Jesus. It's a miracle when a child believes in Jesus. It's a miracle when an infant believes in Jesus. The same miracle no matter the age of the sinner. Now there's a lot more that could be said on this topic. And it's with a little bit of hesitation that I bring it up here in this short devotion for such a, a brief treatment um, because I don't want, want to give the impression that that's all there is to say on this matter. I'll tell you this, if there's anyone who views this video and wants to talk more with me about it, my door is open, bring your Bible. Uh, but the heart of, ma of the matter is this. We have received the kingdom of God, not because of anything that we have done or anything that we could have done. It's all because of God. It's all because of his mercy and his love and his grace. And so we say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or even, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner, the worst sinner. Have mercy on me because I have a, uh, I have a debt that I owe you and I can't pay it. And trusting in Jesus, my Savior, trusting in his promises and depending entirely on him, we go home justified. All praise and glory to him who did it all for us. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.